I'm Greg, and you're listening to Totally Preventable. Totally Preventable. Totally Preventable. Totally Preventable. Totally Preventable. Totally Preventable. Today, going a little different route. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Today, we are going to have our intern from the Newport Prevention Coalition as mm-hmm. Willis. I mean, yeah. We're so used to as being in the office. She's like family, so we just you know, just go as, as, but, yep. um, as will be in with her advisor, Justin today from, mm. from the med school. And she's going to be telling us about the, her experience as an intern here. So it's going to be uh pretty informative, you know, it's yeah. hopefully highlight to possible interns from other schools. I hope she doesn't tell all our office secrets. I hope not either. Cause there are a lot mm-hmm. and by a lot. I mean, none. none. <laughs> <laughs> But but to talk about, you know, hopefully the Met School is uh, going to continue with the coalition. I know a lot of times that a coalition probably isn't highest on the list of different places you can intern at. Mm-hmm. But hopefully, you know, an interview with As would change the minds of some of her fellow peers. Yeah. Kind of fun, yeah. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I show up daily, so. Kind of, Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. I can't wait to hear from us. All right. Without further ado, today joining us on the Totally Preventable Podcast, we have a special in-house guest, which is very rare because we're, you know, we're we're still getting used to it. But uh, we have Justin Matthews, the advisor from the East Bay Met School, as well as As Willis, who's been an intern with the Newport County Prevention Coalition, specifically Newport Prevention, joining us. How are you both doing today? Pretty good. Doing well, thanks. As is also a student at the med school. That that is true. I should have said that. That's okay. That's all right. That's why I'm here. (laughs) Pick up the pieces. Probably the great assist. Yeah. So, so As, tell us a little bit about your experience being an intern. So, so far, um, I've, um, I've only been here for a year, um, but I think so far I've learned a lot, especially like reaching out into the community um and being able to like go to hope recovery which is in uh, middletown where we get to uh, work with uh like group therapy sessions which has been a really um enlightening experience um as well as um what's the word i'm looking for very humbling experience as well um and also just working with Dawn, um, she's a great mentor and she's given me really, really good advice, not even like specifically to the field, but also in le- for life in, in general. Um, so that's been super helpful. And it's been it's given me a lot of resources like our D.C. trip. Um, it's given me lots of opportunities to uh, grow and learn, which I really appreciated so far. Oh. And is your internship part of your um, senior year process or? All four years at the Met, how does... Yeah, so how the Met works is um, each student is supposed to have a twice-weekly internship. So um, for the freshmen and juniors, they have it on Tuesday, Thursday. And for the sophomores and seniors, it's uh, Wednesday, Friday. Um, So uh, that's a huge part of the Met is uh, in-person learning, real-world learning, Mm -hmm. um, is getting out into the community. So um, I was here last year, um, back when we were at the old office um at the end of my junior year but like before I interned at um OPT physical therapy um because I was really into nursing that's what I wanted to do um so when I was a sophomore that's what I used to do and you realized I don't really want to be a nurse (laughs) (laughs) so so Justin how important is the the intern opportunity for for students at the school um I would say it's definitely critical it's like the if we think about the Met School, sort of the core tenants are real world learning projects, project based learning and relationships. Like those are three things that really come to mind. And um, I, I just think for students to get out in the real world and get hands on and see what, you know, what it's actually like, because you don't know, you know, a lot of times um, I've had students that came in having no idea what they wanted to do and just sort of exploring things. I've had students come into the Met, you know, dead set on being an electrician. And then they got out there and they're like, oh, this is not what I thought. And then, uh, you know, other careers, I have a student who's really interested in um, crime scene investigation. And we've been able to go out and interview people and they 
been able to realize, all right, well, you know, I'm still interested, but it's not exactly sort of what I've seen on TV. So it just really like broadens students' experience and um, gives them a better window into like what this might actually be like. And I think just uh, in terms of careers in general, you know, I think we have a limited, just as a society, we have like a limited idea of, you know, we think of like those, you know, teachers, doctor, lawyer, um, you know, whatever. There's like such a short list. And when we look at sort of career and tech education and all the different fields you can go, I mean, there's thousands of jobs. Mm -hmm. And it's been great for me because there's like so many things I've learned about that I didn't even know existed as professions. So uh, real world learning for our students is huge. You could be heading off to be a nurse next year and not realize that wasn't what you were interested in. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> yeah, like forming a coalition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I have um I have kids and one changed her major three times. So yeah, you never know. Mm. I mean, I still don't know what I want to be, you know. Yeah. <laughs> You're the princess of prevention. Yeah, podcast host. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so as as you've been interning and you know we are a, a coalition and a prevention podcast what um what angles have you taken what uh topics have you taken on that you feel affect uh the demographic your your age demographic yeah so um i've been working with um some sophomores and freshmen from my school um in something that i called called the met action program because i realized um that we didn't really have any like prevention education at the met so i thought you know it, ties in perfectly I can do something good with the with the school and add something that we were maybe missing um and also some like a learning experience for me um so it's a six, six week long uh program where each week we have a different topic that we get to talk about and I like to get a lot of input from the students on what they want to talk about um so last week we talked about peer pressure and we had a discussion about it um, and it was very productive um, hearing uh, firsthand experiences from students because me personally, I haven't experienced a lot of peer pressure, but also I keep to myself a little <laughs> bit. Um, so, but hearing the experiences of other students and getting that angle was um, really important. And it's also going to help me with my next group. Um, we're actually finishing up today with an, uh, one of the groups, um, but it's been a uh, great experience for me um, getting to do research on like the scientific aspects of um, drugs and alcohol and getting to relay that information to them um, and then having them see like wow that was something I never knew about um, so yeah that's interesting that um, some kids experience peer pressure and some don't because often we hear oh that doesn't happen at that school or that's not happening to kids now <laughs> and just because it wasn't one person's experience doesn't mean it's not somebody else's. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So um, I hear you have a presentation. Yes. So a big part of um, the METS curriculum is uh, exhibitions, which are basically 30 to 45 minute long presentations that are kind of like in place of like exams or tests. Um, and so when you present, you're showing your learning specifically, um, not being tested on something that like is like blanket. Mm -hmm. um, so I get to talk about like our DC trip um, and I have a bunch of pictures and videos and stuff that I get to share with them. And uh, I get to share with them my learning and hopefully teach someone something there about what I do. Um, so it's not only just assessment, it's also um, relaying uh, my learning to other people. If you weren't comfortable with public speaking, are there other options? <laughs> um, I, I don't know, actually. <laughs> well, I would say yes and no. I mean, the, the expectation is that everybody uh, everybody gives an exhibition and that the format, we're flexible with it. We can accommodate students and what their needs are and how comfortable they are. But we also don't want students to avoid something because of discomfort. Mm -hmm. You know, you want challenge them in a way that's appropriate and continue to build on that and grow over time. Um, and so by the time these students are seniors, it's like they're just used to they're used to it at this mm -hmm. point. You know, I think almost everybody in our advisory is just at this point is totally fine getting up and giving a presentation to, you know, 20 people. Mm -hmm. Wow. Your class sizes are 
smaller than the average high school, right? Yeah, yeah. So we have 16 students per class. So. Nice. Nice, real nice. So before I ask my next question, can you give us the real title? This blew my mind, the real title of the med school. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's the, uh, pa sorry, it's the Paul W. Crowley East Bay Metropolitan Regional Career and Technical Center. There we go. And there we go. I put Justin on the on the, on the hot plate. <laughs> uh, so as as you're giving your presentation and when you're talking to peers, do you find it um, do you find it easy or do you feel like it's difficult because now you're you're hearing all this scientific scientific lingo when you're here at the coalition when you're working with with Dawn. And then relaying that information to your peers, how is that for you? Um, so it's pretty easily, I make it very easily digestible for a typical high schooler. Um, I don't have any specific examples, but um, using analogies has definitely helped um, in those specific situations. Um, like we were talking about lithium ion batteries and um vapes and how they can explode um and i was talking about, about how recently in the news te there was like a tesla that like blew up and mm -hmm. it was because how dangerous lithium-ion batteries were um but when i made that connection people like understood a little bit more um so even though it's like a super tiny detail um something like that um helped out a lot it's a huge detail it's something that i've noticed is when i'm talking to different groups it's really that 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 connection piece. So like your analogy, you know, everyone might not know the lithium ion battery, but everyone knows Tesla. Yeah. So given that analogy, you can spark that and, and continue that conversation. So great job. Thank you. I'll just add one thing that I think has been great about as is workshops with the younger students is again back to that piece about relationships. So as has been really intentional about when going into those groups not just coming in and, you know, here we're doing 30 minutes of education, but the, each day there's been different activities where she's been able to kind of like foster and cultivate a relationship with those students to kind of make them more comfortable with talking with her and kind of just even with each other and sharing now. So if there was, as you get to that point of talking about peer pressure, at that point, those students are like, they feel like it's a safe space and mm -hmm. they can, you know, bring things up that maybe otherwise they wouldn't. Have do you think you have brought change to some of the minds of I, the younger kids? I absolutely think I do. Um, I've had um, two students so far come up to me and tell me that they've had an experience with um, vaping and tell me that something that I taught them um, has changed how they think about it because they didn't know about a certain aspect of it um, and like how harmful nicotine is because we talk about that. Um, but I find it really important when talking about nicotine to not immediately like demonize it. I want them to make their own mm -hmm. um, informed opinions on it. I'm giving them the information. I want them to make an opinion about it. Um, and yeah, I find that something that's really important. How did it make you feel? Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Go How ahead. did it make you feel when when you know that you've you've changed two lives? Well, I I felt very proud, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I also told them that you know there's resources all around them that can um help. The Met is great with that. We have um a social worker who's great with students, and also I'm always here as like a, a peer support for them. So I always let them know that so they can uh, hopefully make better decisions and hopefully something that I said um, can help them extend that to someone else. I think that's some uh, process that a lot of adults miss when trying to um, teach kids or explain things is that they just want to tell you this is you shouldn't be doing this or you should be doing this and this is why instead of giving you the facts and letting you know the ki kids and you make their own decision which is ultimately um better they need to come to their conclusion themselves and make the decision themselves if you're being told to do something of course you don't want to do it you want to do the opposite <laughs> but I if you can figure out why or, or what effects things have on you of course you want to make a better decision for yourself absolutely and i think having um instead of like an adult teacher telling them about these things mm -hmm. i think having a fellow peer or like an upperclassman has had a really uh, positive effect as well because it's I have a very um, 
important aspect of this where I want to feel like a friend to them mm-hmm. rather than someone who's like educating them and like trying to like make them learn something I want to seem like a friend that's a positive influence on them instead so having that view instead is important as well is there anything that you still want to learn from the coalition from your mentor and in, in Dawn I'm sure there's a bunch of stuff um <laughs> nothing off the top of my head I feel like it's more of a learn as I go kind of thing something that's like oh I never I never knew about that that kind of thing all right and Justin how how do students um get into the intern program when can they start and and what's the process once they get there um so the internships start in ninth grade and so when new students come in um, right away, like we start actually even before, I mean, before they start at the Met, if they're, let's say an incoming ninth grader, we do this thing called summer infusion. Um, and even at that point, they start talking with the students about, you know, think about what you want to do for an internship when you get here, because when they come in ninth grade, um, right at the beginning, you know, we start working on resumes, we start working on interviewing skills, we start working on professional communication. Um, and then you know, right in the first few weeks where, you know, cold, cold calling people and just saying, I mean, sometimes like I've been at the school for 17, 18 years. So sometimes I have a contact or an advisor or another staff member, but sometimes we're making, you know, cold calls to people we've never reached out to. Mm-hmm. So that's just like really good experience. And then um, we go out there and, you know, try to set up an interview, meet with them, you know, see if they're open to having an intern, if they are, uh, we usually set up a shadow day just to kind of see like what would this be like for a day you know what is is it a good fit um and if it seems like it's a good fit then we go from there and um students usually stay at an internship at least three months that's sort of like we try to set the bar there so sometimes you f- you first get somewhere and it's you might feel like oh you know like I'm not doing anything I'm not learning anything um and you're just kind of feeling out the process but you know, we tried to at least three months. And sometimes I've had students at the same internship for three years before because the relationship with the mentor was so strong and they were consistently learning um, and just like perfecting their skills and gaining new knowledge. So, Justin, to be honest, I don't know a lot about the mat. Mm-hmm. Um, it, so can you just give us a brief overview about students that attend the mat or what? What makes the Met different from a regular school? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So the Met, I want to say, I should know this, but I don't. I want to say we've been around for 25 years. So there's um, five schools in Providence and the school in Newport. And we're really all one school. We're considered our own district. We're not a charter school. We're a public school. Um, students can apply. There's a lottery to get in. Uh and then also sometimes students transfer out and then we take transfer students mm-hmm. as well. Um, but like I said before, we're all about real world learning. So every student's doing an internship, as I said, ideally two days a week. Um, we're project-based learning. So you're either doing a project through your internship or maybe you have a personal passion project that you're doing at the school. And then um, we're really committed to relationships. So if as as transferred in from Middletown, but other students that started in ninth grade, like they've been with me since ninth grade, I'm their advisor all four years. So I get to know the students really well. I get to know the families really well. Um, and it's just, you know, there's just like a really strong culture and community at the school. Like that's what we're really trying to build and making sure that students feel connected. They have trusted adults around them um, and that they're able to pursue things that really light them up inside. So it's not, you know, um, I guess the typical response of like a lot of students about school is it's boring. Not to say that there's in boring moments at the Met too, but it's, you know, we really, you know, it's like the ball's in your court. It's like, what do you want to learn about? If this is what you want to learn about, all right, we're going to support you making that happen. But then you got to take those steps as well yourself. Um, But the students are still meeting all the requirements to go on to college. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 So we have you know, students that go directly into the workforce, students that go to CCRI, and then we have students that go to every, you know, URI, like the state institution up to Ivy League schools as well. So the whole spectrum. Awesome. That's great. Now for any community partner that would like to partner with the Met to become an intern, what is the process for them? Who do they contact? Uh, great question. Um, Justin Matt. 
Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, the best thing to do would be to reach out to the principal. So at East Bay, the principal is Mary Vieira, and they could, you know, they could call the school's main line. Um, I don't have that number committed to memory, but they could call that number and ask for Mary. Um, we saw, you know, that happens sometimes where people hear about the school and they want to, they're like, oh, I'd love to have an intern and they'll reach out and we'll kind of set up the parameters for, you know, how do we make it an equitable process for interested students to kind of get into that, you know, whether it's, you know, they apply and there's an interview process or whatever the case may be, depending on what the adult that's going to be the intern, I mean, the mentor, what they want to do. So, um, but I would say, yeah, definitely just reach out to the school. Do you ever have to go out and try to find um, an organization to meet the students' needs that's like kind of bizarre or hard to, <laughs> I, I, like, I, you know, like students must be interested in some things that, things that aren't relevant in Newport County or are harder to. Um, well, the, yeah, so the student I gave before, like crime scene investigation, that's one that I would say it's not bizarre, but it's challenging mm -hmm. to kind of like connect um i don't think there's there's not really those particular units on the island um for me cosmetology is like one that i would say is not necessarily bizarre but like if you could see me now you'd see uh, <laughs> that's obviously cosmetology is not a focus of mine um you know even uh ones that i found interesting um i had a student that was really interested in um sort of like what was the word for it um like costume makeup and mm -hmm. stuff like that so that was a little bit more challenging to get them connected with somebody um Interesting. i don't know can you think of people in our advisory that have strange <laughs> interests <laughs> I, love you. I, put them on the spot. I know right <laughs> <laughs> I would say in the same uh, group as like crime scene investigation, I want to do like mental health counseling and stuff. And that's really hard because of HIPAA. Mm -hmm. So oh, um, yeah. I can't, it's not like I can sit in on some therapy <laughs> session. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but I think being in this group is great too anyways, and it's very closely related. So trying to get into a related field is like the best, mm -hmm. um, is like the the second best option if you can't get the like right in the middle how often do students change their internship or their train of thought or realize oh, this isn't what i want to be doing um i would just be making something up if i yeah, kind of gave you a number but it, i would say it definitely happens i would think it was a lot like i would think when you enter in ninth grade you have a idea of what you want to be and you're like quickly or maybe not maybe I mean, I wanted to be a chef mm -hmm. just because I like to eat. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but um, I don't know. I would I, I think this is a great opportunity to try things out and figure out yeah. what's good for you and what's not. Well, I mean, I, I think of a couple of kids in our advisory. So one, you know, Peter, he was interested in mechanics, still interested in mechanics. That's mm -hmm. what he's going to do. Emmett wants to be a, uh, in culinary. Mm -hmm. He's been doing that the whole time. Still what he wants to do. Um, Evan, who was um, really interested in D DEM work mm -hmm. and is still planning to do that after he, he's going to enlist in the Coast Guard mm -hmm. or he's already kind of like signed up. But um, after he gets out of the Coast Guard, that's still what he wants to do. And then we have other students that have changed, like Gabby wanted to be a lawyer, now looking more at anthropology. Oh. Um, wow. that's interesting. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what some of the other when I first wanted to go to the Met like when I went to open houses and stuff when I was in eighth ninth grade um I wanted to do cosmetology okay. um and when I went to an open house I think you were the person that was in the room with me Justin but um <laughs> I was talking about how I really wanted to do cosmetology I wanted to open my own business and be like make my own makeup products but that totally switched when I actually went to the Met and I wanted to do nursing and then I wanted to do psychology so it's changed around a bunch for me personally but what's right. in store for us next year <laughs> well college um yeah, okay. going off to college um and i hope to either be in a um a psychology program that's a five or six year master degree mm -hmm. um and my top school right now is bc because they have a mental health counseling program um that has a year of field work so you get um you almost get your license right out of um 
right after graduating with your master's. Um, so I want to get an LMHC, which is a licensed mental health counselor. Um, and that's what's, that's what's in store. <laughs> have, you, have you gone for a tour? No, not yet. Um, we were planning on going, I, I took a trip to Maine a couple of weeks ago. We were planning on stopping, but it was getting late and we didn't want to. <laughs> One of my kids was convinced she wanted to go to BC, that she wasn't a country girl. And we went on a tour and she was a country girl. <laughs> but um, she's a country girl. So, you know. <laughs> Wow. Well, I know we got a lot of great things. So please hurry that five year. Yeah. <laughs> we need you. Mental <laughs> Health Field needs you. Come back to Newport County. Definitely. Okay. That's if you need. CCRI, you could just still be an intern. Here. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> the commute from BC is much too long. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say surprising. That traffic is crazy. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Thank you both for, for everything. Uh, as we, you know, you've been in our office. We've you're like family here. So, you know, we're never going to stop bugging you. And Justin, thank you. And please keep us in mind whenever you do have interns. We're thank always you. here. There's a lot of fields right here in this office. Yeah. So I would love to help out. Yeah. I appreciate that. All right. Thank you. It's great thank having you guys. Thank Thanks. you. I'm Polly, and you've just listened to Totally Preventable. Totally Preventable. Totally Preventable.